Hello again, and welcome back for part three of our series of energy ball tutorials for HitFilm 2 Ultimate. In part one, we created the energy ball itself, which you see here, and in part two, we tracked the footage in Mocha so that we could match our camera move and align the effect with the actor's hand in our shot. Now we can take the effect element, the tracking data, and our footage, and combine them to get the final shot. So we're going to need all of those various elements for this tutorial. If you followed along with the first two parts of this series, you might already have those files on hand. If not, the links provided with this tutorial will let you download the project file and the tracked composite shot so that you can follow along now. So the first thing we need to do, I'm here in the procedural energy ball project, and we need to import the composite shot that contains our tracking data. So I'll grab this tracked plate composite and open that into HitFilm. Now we can trim the ends of our video layer so that they match the portion of the footage that's tracked. And then we'll just select all these layers and move them back to the start of the timeline. Let's rename this timeline to finished shot. And the particle simulator effect I'm going to rename to energy ball. And then we can take the energy ball composite and we'll just drag it onto our timeline above the video. The first thing we want to do is place this effect. So down here we have the five points from when we tracked our actor's hand. We're going to use the hand center point, which is right there, and we'll parent our energy ball composite to the hand center point. Now select the energy ball, open its transform controls, and zero out its position. But before we do that, Let's convert this energy ball composite to a 3D plane. So now we have three different axes of position data, and we can just set those all to zero. Now see this gets quite a bit bigger because it was at a Z value of minus 300. So it was farther away from the camera than our tracking point was. This demonstrates why using a 3D plane for this effect is handy because the distance between that 3D plane and our 3D camera will define the size that that energy ball appears at. So we don't have to adjust the scale as the camera gets farther from the actor holding that sphere. That's automatically handled for us because we're using a 3D plane. Okay, so now we've got that zeroed out. We'll open the layer properties for our energy ball composite, set the alignment to towards active camera, and what that's going to do is just make sure that this sphere stays circular at all times. Since the effect is not a genuine 3D sphere, this is a 2D effect made to look like a 3D sphere, we don't want its angle relative to the camera to get screwed up. So I will control Z to undo that. And if we set the alignment to towards active camera, that ensures that our sphere is directly facing the camera no matter where the camera moves through the shot. Now choose the add blend mode so that the brightness of the effect is properly conveyed. Now back in the transform controls we can adjust the scale of the effect until it seems appropriate. I think I used a scale of 3% originally. Yeah, so that makes a fairly small ball in his hand there. You might want to make it bigger. Whatever size you want to use I'm going to go back to three, just for fun. And at this point, you should be able to scrub through the timeline, and the ball will stay nicely in place on the actor's hand there. Now, we've got this floor plane set up because we have a 3D camera, and that's not really relevant to what we're doing. So up in the options, let's just uncheck the floor plane option to hide that so that it's out of our way. And there you can see how that effect is nicely tracked into the footage. So now, with the effect in place, we can focus on compositing it in so that it looks convincingly realistic. Right now, it's just kind of stuck onto there, and it doesn't look horrible, but we can certainly make it look even better. So first of all, take note of the fact that as we scrub through this footage, see that hard line right there? The edges, right in there, you can see the top pretty clearly, the edges of that composite become visible at times, when the light rays coming out of the sphere are abruptly cut off. If I select that again, you can see those are just the edges of that composite shot. So we need to make sure that those edges are not visible in our final shot. There are two basic ways we can correct this. First, we could edit the properties of the energy ball composite. You can right click and choose properties. And we could change the size 
of this video until it was big enough that those edges were outside of the frame. That would be one approach. And so the second method is to just open up our energy ball composite. Here's that timeline. And in the grade layer, if we turn off those light rays so that we just have the sphere there, then we can go back to our finished shot. Those edges are no longer visible because the rays aren't there. And we can just create the light rays in this timeline instead. So back in our finished timeline, let's create a new grade layer. And this is where we'll create the rays for our sphere. So here on the grade layer, we can just grab the light rays effect, drag it onto there, and then open its controls, and we can edit its appearance. First of all, in the position, use layer, we will set to our energy ball. And this will ensure that the rays are emanating from the position of the energy ball layer. So no matter where that layer is positioned in the scene, as it follows the tracking data, our rays are going to originate from the center of that ball. Now I'm going to make these rays a lot more subtle. You don't have to if you don't want to. You can use whatever settings you prefer. But I want to see the detail in that sphere that we created. So I'm going to pull this effect way back so that those details are visible. So I'm going to reduce the intensity to 0.5 and change the radius to 70. Okay, so now as we scrub through, you can see this gives us some subtle rays emanating from that sphere. Okay, so that makes the rays much more suited to my taste. But if you'd like to try something different, whether different settings for the light rays or a different effect entirely, I encourage you to do that and experiment. I'm just giving you the settings I used so that you can follow along at home. Now to make the brightness of the sphere and the rays stand out from the rest of the scene a bit more, I want to reduce the brightness of the scene overall. So to do this, I will use a levels histogram effect, which is in the color correction folder. And I'm going to apply this to the footage itself. I'll open up those controls, and here's our levels histogram. By applying this to the footage, it allows me to darken the footage without affecting the sphere or the rays. So we could add it to our grade layer, but that's going to darken our effect as well. It'll darken the light rays, it'll darken the energy ball that's under that. And I don't want to do that, I just want to affect the footage. So I'm applying the levels directly to the footage layer. I'll start by setting the gamma to about 0.7 somewhere in there to darken that up. You can see the difference there. That's just dimming things down. And then to make the shadows a bit thicker, a little bit darker, I'm going to change the input black to 0.1. And that helps improve the contrast a bit. Now you can see how much different the sphere and the rays look. If I just toggle this off, it gives us a little bit more definition in that effect. And it's much more clearly a focal point of the scene already, but we're not done yet. The next thing we want to do is focus more on the finer details of how these effects are blending into the scene and how we can make them feel more realistic. So first, if there was an energy sphere in the scene that was this bright, it would naturally be throwing some light around in the scene. We've got these rays coming off, but the objects in the scene, such as the actor, which are immediately next to the ball, aren't really being affected by it. So for realism, we want to enhance the lighting a bit to make the sphere interact with the scene a bit more. We'll use a light flare to do this and add it to the same grade layer as our light rays. So by default, the effect is created right here. We'll open up its controls and in the hotspot position, we're going to use our energy ball layer to set the position of that effect. Now you can see it moved a bit, but it's still not on the ball. That's because by default, the center point of the hotspot is offset. So we can just set these to zero, and now the light flare is perfectly centered on our sphere. Now we have the ability to alter the appearance of this flare quite a bit through the preset we start with for the flare type and the adjustments we make to the other settings. If we wanted to further enhance the light rays effect, we could use this default setting. You see all these much more defined rays that we're getting here from this preset. We could maybe go into the rays options and adjust the width scale a bit to soften those somewhat. But again, I want to stay pretty subtle with this effect as I don't want to lose the detail we created in the sphere itself. The sphere is the focal point of the scene and all of these rays and lighting enhancements that we're creating should support and enhance that sphere rather than burying it behind them. So I'm going to use the soft, or excuse me, the spotlight soft preset, which doesn't have a lot of off center elements to it. I'm not looking to really add a lens flare to this scene. I'm just trying to enhance the lighting of the sphere. 
So to clarify what I'm talking about there, if I choose the 500 to 300 millimeter zoom, you've got all of these other offset circles and so forth. And as I scrub through the scene, you can see how those offset elements move separately. That's creating the effect of an actual lens flare, where this bright light is reflecting through the various glass elements inside the lens and creating that flaring effect. That's not what I'm after. I want to just enhance the brightness of the effect itself. So I'm going with the Spotlight Soft preset as a starting point, and then I'm going to soften this further by making some adjustments to its settings. For the hotspot controls, I reduced the brightness to 0 0.65, and then I set the scale to 1.2. The idea is that by making this flare bigger and less bright, we're softening its overall appearance. Okay, so there are some rays in this effect, although they're already pretty subtle, and I'm gonna make these a little bit brighter just to soften the transition around the edges of that hot spot in the center of this flare. So for the rays, I'll set the brightness to 3.3, .3, and you can see how that adds a little bit more brightness around the center there. And then for the length scale, I'll set that to 1.4, and then increase the quantity scale to suit your taste. You can see as we crank this up, we get more and more, and that can get pretty dramatic. So you can adjust that as you want to, but I used a setting of 2.6. In the other elements controls, increase the brightness a bit to like 1.7, and I like the way that all the pieces are fitting together into this effect now, although overall the whole thing is once again a fair bit brighter than I'd like it to be. So now that I've got the relative brightness of all the pieces kind of where I want them, I'm just going to turn the whole effect down using the master intensity slider here. So you can see here's the master intensity control for this effect. And I'm just going to bring that down to like 0.3 to make that much more subtle. Now if I toggle that on and off, you can see it's clearly making a difference, but it doesn't jump out at you when the effect is turned on. So if you're wondering how I knew what the rays should look like in this scene, or what adjustments to make to get there, it's not really a scientific procedural type thing that happens. It's art. So basically you might have a clear idea in your head of what the effect should look like, and you adjust settings to see how you can get that result. Or you might start by messing with the settings to see what result you can come up with that looks cool. As the compositing artist, it is up to you to find a combination of settings that works well for the scene and creates an appearance that you like. Each artist could come up with different settings, and that is not only acceptable, it is often desirable. So please, experiment with the settings for the light flares in this scene, and find the settings that you like. The same would apply for any scene that you're working on. It's almost never the case that there is only one set of settings that is correct for the scene. It's largely a matter of artistic taste. The last step I want to do to this shot is a bit of final grading, which again is largely a matter of personal and artistic preference. I'm going to start by sharpening the footage a bit because this was filmed with a DSLR and DSLRs create soft footage that pretty much can always benefit from some sharpening, as you likely know. So I'm going to apply an unsharpen effect to my footage to sharpen it. If that's confusing you, then look up Unsharp Mask on Wikipedia to understand why it's called Unsharpen. Set the radius to 4 pixels, the threshold to 0 0.02, and the amount, I'll bump that up a little bit, to 1.4. So now, look at the detail in the actor's costume here as I toggle that sharpening on and off, and you can really see the dramatic difference that that little bit of sharpening can make to our scene. For the rest of the grading, I'm going to create a new grade layer over the top of everything. So this grade layer, I'll rename this just to keep track. This is our lighting enhancements. Now I'm going to create a new grade layer. So by using a new grade layer over the top here, our lighting enhancements, the energy ball, and the footage are all being affected at the same time by what we put over the top. I'm not going to do anything too elaborate as far as grading, but I'll briefly discuss the idea behind my adjustments. I wanted to create more of a steampunk science-y feel than a magical feel to this scene. I didn't want this guy to look like a magician so much as some sort of vintage scientist. So I opted to go for a sort of vintage appearance with the footage. I used a brightness and contrast effect, and I reduced the brightness, I think I did like minus 10, and then increased the contrast a bit, around 7 looks pretty good. 
I used color temperature to warm the whole thing up and give it more of kind of a golden brass-ish appearance. 4260 is what I used. And then I used a hue saturation and lightness effect to boost the saturation up. When we darkened everything down earlier in the tutorial, it kind of pulled some of the color out of the footage. And so in the master controls for the hue saturation and lightness, I increased the saturation to 30 just to bring some of that original color back into the footage. And then I added a vignette over the top of everything. Now obviously these default settings are a bit rubbish for what we need, so we can adjust those a bit as well. So I'll set the width and height to match the size of our footage, and then adjust the horizontal stretch to 1.5 to make that a bit wider. The vertical stretch to 1.5, and then I'll increase the softness to bring that corner darkening in somewhere right in there I think works well. So there's the vignette. Not Nothing too dramatic, but definitely helps to uh, bring the attention into the center of the scene. And now, if we play through that, there's the final effect, but I'm realizing there's one more thing that we still need to do. I need to tweak the position of that sphere a little bit again, so that it's up above his hand because we never really offset it from the tracking data. We want it to be up floating above his hand a little bit. So we'll select our energy ball composite and in the transform controls, we're just gonna offset the position. We'll just raise that up a little bit so it's above his hand. And because we're offsetting from the tracking data, that ball should stay appropriately spaced from the hand throughout the entire shot. Lovely, lovely. And there is our finished shot. Hopefully, yours comes out a little bit different from this. Even if you're following along step by step to get this exact shot, which is fine, I hope that you'll go back through the tutorial afterward and experiment with some different settings to see how you can modify this to get an appearance to the effect that's unique to you. A key aspect of compositing is being familiar with the tools you have on hand so that when you come up with an idea of what a scene calls for, you know what tools are available to pull it together. Being able to think creatively and approach the scene with concepts rather than procedures will allow you to create great composites that fit the scene and your own personal style. Then you can devise an approach and reach for whatever tools you need to make it happen. Hopefully this series of tutorials helped you understand my approach a bit so that you can apply the concepts to other scenes that you work on as well and not just this specific scene. So thank you for watching. Please let us know what aspects of this series you found most beneficial or which aspects could be improved or adjusted so that we can tailor our future tutorials to be as effective as possible. And then subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet so that you don't miss the future tutorials that we create for you.